It's time for another eighth of update. A cycling community, this is Steve Grusis, the Cycling Greek. First, a little bit of history for those of you not familiar with my channel. I first acquired AFib right before my 60th birthday, just over a year ago. I did this district championship road race for the old guys. I came home and a couple days later when I got back on the bike, I just, I didn't feel right. I still wasn't recovered. So I took a few more days off. I got back on the bike again. Still wasn't recovered. I figured, well, you know, I better go talk to the doctor. Went to the doctor and he said, hey boy, you got atrial fibrillation. So then I got to learn about atrial fibrillation. I made some changes to my life. I did some experimenting. I, one of the things that I did was I gave up ultra events, in my case, 200 mile events. Because uh, they're not races, but I would treat them like a race. And I would train for them like I was going to race it. So I had to give that up. I still wanted to race uh, criteriums and road races. And those go from uh, 20 miles to 65 miles from my age group. I, through a little experimenting, I found that I could. So, and now it's eight years later. I, she's another week from now, I'll be 68. The next year, I went to that district championship road race. And I came home, and I woke up the next morning, and I had AFib. So the, the following year, when I went to that same championship road race, I was thinking about that. But uh, no AFib from that. No one knows why a particular incidence of AFib happens. But there's a lot of data to indicate associations. But my biggest issue was lack of sleep. I was burning the candle at both ends for decades. And also what I was doing for decades was treating fatigue as if it was something to overcome rather than something that had to be worked with. I wasn't a caffeine drinker. It wasn't a coffee drinker or any caffeine, but about nine months before my first eighth of incident, uh, I discovered energy drinks. And I started using those when I was coming home from races because, you know, I was pretty tired and I didn't want to fall asleep in the car. So I'd start taking them and then I just noticed on how awake I was. And so then I started using it on a continual basis. And man, this was, it was pretty great. It was great because now I was awake, I wasn't sleepy. Now I'm not saying that that led to my AFib, but that certainly was a contributor because you're forcing your heart to do something that it's not ready to do. And uh, it's also causing changes in your hormonal system that aren't, uh, uh, that wouldn't be happen on their own unless you were, you know, taking caffeine. But that's kind of another issue there. So obviously one of the, one of the changes I did was no more caffeine. To present day, my update, I've had very few palpitations. Sometimes the palpitations would come in cycles. I'd have a month of palpitations. Basically, the palpitations for me would be skipped heartbeats or, or a quick heartbeat, maybe a uh, three to five second acceleration. And the acceleration, it wouldn't go up to like uh, 200 beats per minute, but it would accelerate up to like uh, uh, 90 beats per minute. That hasn't happened for a while. And usually I associate that with fatigue. I use that as a fatigue marker. Now I'm in the middle of my race season and my workouts can get pretty intense. The palpitations, you know, there's a few palpitations and again associated with a very tough workout, but usually they're not there. And as long as I slowly build up my form, the less palpitations that I'll have afterwards. Uh, I guess the update is that I haven't had a AFib incident. The last one was February of 22 and it's now June of 23. Those first two times that I had AFib, you know, after the district championships, each of those times I got zapped out of it. So now I'm gonna talk about drugs. I was on beta blocker and blood thinner for about 15 months. After that second time I got AFib and then getting checked by the doctor after he, they zapped me out of it, he was saying that I could stop doing the uh, beta blocker because the amount I was taking, 25 milligrams, was, uh, was therapeutic. But, well, I'm sorry, it was homeopathic. A little while after, because you know I just had that second AFib incident, I, I, I stopped taking it rather than you know, when he said to stop taking it. So I let him know when I stopped taking it and then I also stopped taking the blood thinner because you know, this crashing, and, and so I don't want to complicate things with that. What they did is they gave me flecainide. It's a sodium channel blocker to take when I needed to. So if I go into AFib, I would take uh, 300 milligrams of that, and I would take an Eliquis in case the, ch uh, the sodium channel blocker didn't work. Uh, and so I've had to use that, I think, four times, maybe, maybe five times after that. What it does, it just hunkers down your body. Everything just slows down. 
And so that's how it resets the, the heart rates. And fortunately, it's been able to reset each of those times. The longest time I've been without AFib is just one day under two years. I remember that. I was so looking forward to that second year, and then, phew, I got AFib. And each time I got AFib, I can associate it with a particular thing I was doing. So it could have been uh, something associated with my vagus nerve. I had uh, maybe, at this one time, I take eaten a lot of uh, dry oats, and so they expanded in my stomach, and then I'm working on the computer hunched over, and then it just started going. Uh, there's other times when uh, I've maybe made a mistake in, in uh, following my rules, and so then it would, uh, and then it would kick off, and so, you know, then you learn to, to follow your rules. The rules, basically, they're designed to keep pressure off of my heart when I don't want it on my heart, because obviously when I'm training for uh, racing, there's pressure put on the heart. Uh, so that includes when a dicey situation comes up, that maybe my taking an extra second, look around, see what's really going on, that type of thing. Sometimes I just have to walk away from the situation, uh, from my heart. I certainly don't take any caffeine anymore, again, because you're forcing your body to do something that's not, that it doesn't want to do. And there's the, the rest of my diet. Uh, the rest of my diet is designed to not, again, not put any pressure on my heart by putting any pressure anywhere else on my body. So I'm not doing refined carbohydrates as a rule, you know, unless it's after a workout. I try to eat clean, uh, so that means a lot of, uh, lot of different colored vegetables, uh, a lot of food that, if it's not raw, then it's lightly processed, and uh, the less pressure I can put on the rest of my body, then the less pressure that'll be on my heart. That's, that's my update, and for uh, you young cyclists out there, keep that in mind. Sleep and treat fatigue as it's something that uh, you have to work with, not to overcome, and stay away from that caffeine. Okay, if you have any questions or comments, put them below, and as always, Comment, like, subscribe, The Cycling Greek.